Snow Tracks is brought to you by Polaris. Think outside. Ski Do. Winter lovers get out there and experience that Ski Do feeling. And by Hercules Tire. Ride on our strength. So Luke and I have done some pretty exciting Comparos over the year, but I don't think any have been as anticipated, desired, asked for, demanded, demanded as this one. This year we can do it because we have two Turbo 2 strokes. And so this is the Turbo 2 stroke trail shootout. two sleds we have in the chopping block, this is not a hard one to figure out because there's only two available. <laughs> the first one is obviously Polaris's 2024 VR1 Patriot Boost 850 Turbo. And the other one is Skidoo's new 2024 MXZ XRS 850 E-Tech Turbo R. Competition package. Competition package. Yep. So these are the two sleds in the shootout. And what's interesting is that this sled only comes like this. There are no options, period. End of story. Yep. This is it. Well, and but this sled, sled only comes like this as well. Like no options exactly as it sits. So if you say, well, these two really aren't all that comparable, Too you're bad. wrong, because there is no other options. That one has a bunch of accessories, so we'll just have to ignore it those It does, for ignore now. the accessories, that's that. Yeah. So I think we'll, we'll do this the same as we've always done our, our shootout stories. We'll just break the sleds down into a bunch of different categories, and then we'll score them one or two points, depending on which one is the best and which one is the second best, which also is the worst. <laughs> In this case, In that's this true. Case. So what should we start with? What category, AJ? What's on the block for you? I think number one, it has to be the motor. We have to talk about the motor first because that's I was really... kind of we save the motor for last. No, we got to do it first because that's a differentiating factor between these two. I mean, the rest of it is VR1 and competition package, which I mean, really is similar to XRS. So I think we got to talk about the motor right up front. And I know which one I like. Yeah, and I think I do too, but I have a bunch of different preferences. It's interesting because it's not as, as cut and dried as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I thought it would be, I like one and the other one I don't like, but that's not true because while it is true, I like the Skidoo better. The Skidoo, yeah. I think is, well, not think, it is a more linear motor. It's smoother. It just feels, the word we use for Skidoo this year entirely is more refined. Refined. But I do like the brappiness and the angry kind of persona of the Polaris. I like that it's not as refined. I like that it's noisier. I don't not like the Polaris, and the number one hallmark thing that I like more about it is the kind of blow off. Oh, the turbo That's a great, flutter. It's a great yeah. sound. And it really does kind of give you something because this snowmobile is so linear, you wouldn't know if you didn't get on it besides the fact that you look down and you're doing 130 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, but besides that, I think, like you said, it's refined. There is nothing about that motor that you stop and go, why does it do that? And there are a couple things about this and that's really the only downside. When the power or when the exhaust valve comes on, you notice it. Yeah. And then down low, there is a very weird stumble at initial throttle tip in. If you're just idling it around by your house, it's on, off, on, off, on, off. And it's just those little things. It's little it's things. It's not big things. But at the same time, like you said, this sled you could ride all day and not even know you had a turbo. Yep. That sled you're going to know because of that turbo flutter yeah. and because of a number of other different characteristics. Yeah. So the question you have to ask yourself is, do you want something that feels so refined that it doesn't even feel like it's turbocharged or do you want something that gives you that turbo experience? And unfortunately for the Polaris, I just think that this engine being so linear and so seamless and so smooth, yeah. it, it's just the better motor. And I don't it, know about top speed. I don't know about like overall horsepower it's numbers really on a hard. dyno. That's really hard to compare. None of that stuff I care about. I care yeah. about this sled being an easy sled to live with day in and day they out. They are both freaking fast. Very like, fast. And if, if you want to stretch it out and you find a three mile section where you can hold it wide open on a lake, well, 
God bless you. But right now, there is no section of trail where I can find the top speed of either of these snowmobiles safely. Now, there is one other thing we should talk about in terms of motor. I don't know that it'll change our, our opinions, but Skidoo has had to add a methanol injection system to this motor yep. to maintain the horsepower as intake temperatures rise. Polaris doesn't have to do that. Sure, you, gotta make, pay you, know, some, you gotta pay for something more. That's right, you've got another tank, you've got another thing to fill, another product to buy. So there is that negative. Yeah. Even with that, it still doesn't make me want to pick this one second and that no. one first. I'm, I'm in the same boat. And launch control. Oh yeah, as, right. As much as you might say, oh, I'm never gonna use that or you'll never use that. Yeah, you probably won't use it a whole lot, but like the fluttering of the turbo on this, when you put that in launch control and rev the engine next to anybody else and it's coughing and sputtering and it sounds like a big block Chevy just about to take off for the moon. Or explode. It, it sounds awesome. It, it really is a good noise. It's like we always said with the Yamahas, give us a neutral button so we can rev a four stroke. Yeah. It's a really good sound. So there, I, I mean, I thought that I was going to originally pick this one just because of the methanol injection and because of a couple things like that. But after riding it, I, I really do like that motor. And I think, yeah. like you said, it's refined. And that for 2024, that is the word for Skidoo, yep. is refined. Probably the second most important factor of these sleds, and that is handling. Yep. Because a super fast snowmobile that handles terrible is kind of just a weapon. I agree. And I would say Skidoo's competition package has raised the Skidoo bar a lot. Mm -hmm. The Polaris VR1 front end handling, which really when it comes to handling, it is front end. I mean, the rear yeah. end, you can ride with a sled that's packing up and over damped and over valved and over sprung. And as long as the front end will go around a corner good, you can live with the rear end not being perfect. But if the front end ain't right, yeah. the whole sled isn't right. I mean, the truth of the matter is, the front end of the Polaris is the same as it's been since they released the VR1. Yep. It hasn't changed. We have said dozens of times that we love it, we think it's best in the industry, and that hasn't changed a bit. So nope. not a surprise that the front end of this sled is gonna be really, really good. I agree. The surprise is here, though. And the other surprise is that we both say that the XCR front end works a little bit better. Is better than the VR1. And the problem in this category is you can't get an XCR with a Patriot Boost, yeah. which makes this feel a whole lot better because Skidoo went to the KYB Pro 40 EA3s up front, and there is something magical about those shocks that makes the front well, end of that not sled. Not just those shocks, it's something magical about a larger diameter shock on the front of a Skidoo that just works better. Yeah. And I can't figure out why, you can't figure out why. I mean, the, the, the Lynx has shock 46s, and it works amazing. Yeah. So, you know what, let's put like like one inch diameter shock shafts on all the <laughs> snowmobiles. At the end of the day, this is the best handling Skidoo they've ever made, yes. I think. Yep. It handles way better than anything else out yep. there, but does it handle better than that? I think going through the corners, I still pick the Polaris. I would too. I still pick the Polaris. Yeah. It's not by a lot though. It is not In by a lot In this category, now. so with yeah. this one being not quite as good as an XCR, which yep. is weird, and this one being better than your average XRS, the gap is definitely closed, it's tighter. but I still think for day-to-day -day riding, I would take the Polaris. Yeah, I like the front end through the corners, yeah. and when I jumped on and off, this does go through a corner more precisely. Now, that brings us to rear suspension, which is the same thing we do every flipping time that an arm motion is involved. Uh, yes, And there is. is no debating that that is the better rear suspension. This is a competition package arm motion, which means absolutely nothing. It just has yep. some stiffeners and solid tires. And, and Pro 40s. Pro 40 shocks in the back. It doesn't make it worse, it doesn't make it better, it doesn't have to, because it's already the best. That's really good. Pro CC is really good, but it's just not better than our motion. This pretty much wipes out our points for suspension because this gets one for front, that gets one for back, and yeah. there we go, we're at zero. Yeah. So, moving on. <laughs> so after suspension comes ergonomics, and this, this is definitely Weird. something that you pick based on yeah. how you fit on a snowmobile. Um, it's all it's, about personal preference. It's subjective. Yeah, it really is. And there's no there's no right or wrong answer. But what we're going to do is give you what we feel yeah. and what we've experienced. Yep. Um, you, your results may vary, and that's fine. But this is how we found. Yep. And what's interesting is that we're having trouble agreeing on this one. Yes. I personally still like how the Matrix fits. I like how this fits better than any other Skidoo I've ridden. And there's, I think, one major reason for that. It's that the seat is firmer. The seat, seat foam, foam is foam definitely is better. You don't squat down onto it, yeah. which gives you a more upwards over the over the front of the sled competition feel yes and, and yeah. it works and for the competition package it makes perfect sense yep although it also makes perfect sense on every sled they make they probably this seat should is put a better. seat like that on every um, other sled but it didn't change it enough for me to like 
it more than the Polaris. I still yeah. like the Polaris better. I don't not like the Polaris. I just found that one of the biggest things for me was the open footwell area. When I'm going around a corner, I really like to be able to move my boot around the edge of the sled yeah. a little bit, and I didn't feel like I was trapped. In this sled, my boot got in the and footwell I'll and I'll agree it got with you 100% in. on that. The footwells on this felt really tight. The footwells on this felt really, really good. Yeah. I found that moving from side to side was easier on that sled. I could get off the side either way much easier, took less effort. I like the handlebar to seat ratio on that. This was good, it wasn't better. See, I found this one too low for me. I found that one higher up and I liked it. And that's just that's just two different riding yeah, styles. Yeah, it is. And for me, my pick is the Skidoo. But for you, I already know it, your pick the is Polaris. the Polaris. Yep. I think we gotta call this a draw because it's so subjective yeah. and it's really not fair for us to push one another and say, well, you have to go with that one because really you fit on different snowmobiles differently. So should we even bother talking about it next time? I think we have to, because one time we're <laughs> gonna agree. Someday. Yeah. Snow Tracks is brought to you by Princess Auto, Ideas, Tools, so next up, what should we talk about? I think we should go with like technology. Technology really is our last category, I yeah, think. Yeah, and, and it's pretty interesting. These sleds both have all of the technology. Yep. They have as much as you can get from each manufacturer. So it's not like it's not like one is missing something that they that it could have. Yeah. You got 7S over there, you got Skidoo's 10 inch display here. Yep. Like one, like the other, they do the same things for the most part. There are some features of the 7S that we prefer and like better. I like smart warmers better than just regular hand warmers. I think it works. I like the left-hand switch cluster on the Polaris better than this one, though this is growing on me. I'm yep. learning it. It still has quirks I'm never gonna like. But then you got the Skidoo, and there's some really cool technology here. There is, yeah, I, I think it's a, this one is so tough. I, and even some of the small things I mentioned to you today out on the trail, which isn't technology, but it kind of is. Marking the handlebars with the different degrees of adjustment yeah. and marking them where your hand guards go so that they're always level and perfect. There's small things like that yeah. that I look at on the Skidoo. The DESS tether cord, one tether cord that's programmed to the snowmobile and you Is can't steal anything. Yeah. There's just all this small stuff. And even when you talk to some Polaris what guys, else is there? they'll tell you. What else is there? There's one other cool thing on this sled that no one else has. Well, the, the whole shot. There's, well, the whole shot. Oh, sorry. You know what? The one thing that drives me nuts Skidoo for so many years always puts KYB, Brembo, and any other thing that's on the snowmobile. And I didn't even know when I stepped on it. I did read the specs, but I had ridden so many other snowmobiles that I forgot. It has shot. It's the only Where trail does it sled. Say it? It's the only trail sled Skidoo's ever built that has the shot starting system. And it flipping works great. It works awesome. And we, okay, wait. We said it would work. Yeah. When it was first released, we said, no, it will work on a trail set, and guess what? We also asked if a turbo would work, and they said, no, stop no. talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, SHOT is a very cool piece of technology, I and mean, it has one major feature here, one major function that, that just sets it above everything else. It's that this sled is as light as its non-turbo counterpart. That's so impressive. There's, there is zero trade-offs to buy the turbo in terms of weight. The yep. Polaris is very light as a turbo. It is an yep. extremely light turbo two-stroke, but it still is a weight penalty over the non-turbo version. And you know what was cool? Today, we started it once in the morning, Yep. and we start and stop that sled probably, what, 100 times? Oh, at least, yeah. Yeah, and it did not need us to rope start it even not one once. time. Nope. Not once. Nope. So I, there is a lot of technology. I will give it to you that the switch cluster takes a little time for you to get used yep. to. The gauge, I like that I can bring turbo boost. I like that I can bring my hand warmers up. Yep. I have a feeling probably by next year that Skidoo will bring some of those widgets in an update. Yeah. But like you said, there's a trade-off there. The reality is to me, I think there's just more technology in a Skidoo. And but it's it. usable technology. It's usable technology. It's not it just is. there for the sake of technology. Nope. The DESS tether, it's that's so a great idea. People yep. appreciate that. Shot starting, that gives you tangible benefits that make sense and, and make your riding experience better. Yep. Um, obviously, the displays, they're a wash in my they opinion. Are. One's yeah. better, one's not, whatever. Yep. Um, but this sled has more technology that actually works, and I just think that gives it the win. I don't think you can argue with that. Yeah, and that, unfortunately, for you, because I think you came into this thinking this was gonna win. Well, no, actually, I did the <laughs> intro on this sled, and I came away from the intro thinking that this sled was was gonna give that one, a, if not a run for its money, that it was probably better. And at the end of the day, I, I, I can't disagree with the points because this is better, and I actually picked this as the winner in a couple categories. Don't forget about That's that. That's true, yeah. But yeah, I think that it's pretty straightforward, pretty obvious that for 2024, the best turbo out there overall. Overall. For, for just, just to just to 
ballooning. There's so better and overall. worse on both sides for That's different right. areas, but this stacks the deck and it gets the win, in my opinion. It does. And it's a great snowmobile. I can't ride it. that yep. all winter long and be absolutely thrilled to do and so. And of all the skidoos out there, this is the one I like riding the best. I know, me too, because of that front end. Because of whatever voodoo they've done up there, yep. it just works. Yep. And I think overall this sled absolutely deserves to be listed as the snow tracks turbo shootout winner. Absolutely, yeah. They took the syrup, they boiled it down, they got the sap, and it is sweet and delicious, and I want more of it. <laughs> <laughs> can't say anything better than that. Ha, ha, ha. Snow Tracks has been brought to you by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. Udaway Tourism, snow-covered landscapes to explore. And by FXR, brings you more. On this week's test ride, we're going to be talking about the all-new Ski-Doo MXZ XRS 600R E-Tech with a 137-inch track. And maybe just as importantly, we're going to talk about a phenomenon in the snowville business called the wannabe. We're gonna tell you exactly what that means. So let's review what a wannabe looks like. Wannabes are snowmobilers whose identities hang on the genre of their sled of choice. There's a new herd of wannabes who think they're mountain riders but live and ride on the prairies. Not even gonna to touch on that topic. I'm here to talk about the wannabeer who wants the cachet and exclusivity of showing up with a full-on snowcross cross-country sled. So you don't think I'm down on this behavior, I will admit I have, on occasion, falsely represented myself while hiding behind wannabe equipment. But I digress. We need to talk about the 600R XRS, and that's exactly what we're going to do because there is a lot of cool equipment and standard equipment that makes this sled stand out from the crowd. It also helps justify its rather lofty MSRP. The most notable change for model year 23 on the XRS 600 is the new clothes it wears. This is the full Monty G5 bodywork and chassis. The look is fresh and more organic than the G4 skin. The underpinnings benefit from a completely new and proprietary engine cradle incorporating four mounts, up one from the G4. This mounting system not only maintains belt alignment and center to center stability, but the spin-off benefit is the exponential reduction of chassis bodywork vibration, including the handlebars and the windshield. A consistent gripe that we have had with all Skidoo Gen 2s through to Gen 4s is the drive axle mounted brake. We just think it doesn't have enough modulation or enough feel to be worthy of a brake on a high performance snowmobile like an XRS. Well, there's hope this year in a new four piston caliber drive axle brake. For model year 24, Skidoo is upgrading all XRS, MXZs, and Renegades with an impressive four-piston caliper pinching a large diameter rotor, all activated by a very slick adjustable brake lever and an improved master cylinder. This reinvention of the REVS brakes is no small deal. The real-world performance of this brake system erases our decade-long harping about a hard-as-a-rock brake feel and mostly non-existent modulation. Disappointingly, there are two key features that you cannot get with a 600 MXZ XRS. They're only available with the 850. That is the whiz-bang, super cool, 10.2 inch display and all of its associated benefits. And the other thing is smart shocks. Smart shocks are not available on the 600R either. In place of smart shocks, the 600 XRS is delivered with high quality, high and low speed compression damping adjustable KYB Pro 40 EA 3R shocks on the RAS IFS and the center skid shock and the rear arm shock. That is a lot of alphabet soup to describe those shocks. Keep in mind this particular XRS is a 137 spinning a 1.50 ice ripper. Ride quality from this shock package and the mogul bridging 137 inch skid is quite frankly remarkable. Adjustability of the suspension at all four corners is unrivaled by anything save smart shocks. The 600 XRS comes with a steering rack controlling the steering system. This setup reduces and almost eliminates completely bump steer 
and also provides for more powerful turn in and a bite through the center of the corner. It's a great idea. As well, the R-Motion Outback comes with standard rail doublers for those bump runners who really abuse a skid. Performance from the 600R E-Tech Twin is spirited and seamless. This engine is known for silky operation and its smoothness is even more profound in the G5 architecture. The Rotax 600R does not use boost injectors as does the 850 E-Tech. As a result, the 600R can deliver impressive miles per gallon. Skidoo claims the engine produces 125 horsepower and we would not doubt this number. The sled engages strong off idle and pulls hard to its 8,000 RPM shift speed. There's one thing about the new G5 architecture that we find less than satisfactory. It's this switch gear on the left hand side of the handlebars. What we don't like is the positioning of the hot grip switch. It's not easy to get to. And we don't like the start button because it doesn't have any color coding for starting and for reverse actuation, which would make sense to be red and or yellow. We like the switch gear on the G4 better than the G5, but that's just us. Skidoo is playing to an exceptionally hardcore group of buyers when they hang the XRS nomenclatcher on an MXZ. While this is a very capable and impressive wannabe sled, we have to wonder if a 600 engine is the right fit for this highly selective buyer profile. Wouldn't this buyer be more likely to walk up to the sales counter and lay down the extra fresh for an XRS 850? Thank you.